In engineering and science, dimensional analysis is the analysis of the relationships between different physical quantities by identifying their base quantities such as length, mass, time, and electric charge and units of measure such as miles versus kilometers, or pounds versus kilograms and tracking these dimensions as calculations or comparisons are performed. The conversion of units from one dimensional unit to another is often somewhat complex. Dimensional analysis, or more specifically the factor label method, also known as the unit factor method, is a widely used technique for such conversions using the rules of algebra. The concept of physical dimension was introduced by Joseph Fourier in 1822. Physical quantities that are of the same kind, also called commensurable, have the same dimension, length, time, mass, and can be directly compared to each other, even if they are originally expressed in differing units of measure, such as yards and meters. If physical quantities have different dimensions such as length versus mass, they cannot be expressed in terms of similar units and cannot be compared in quantity also called incommensurable. For example, asking whether a kilogram is larger than an hour is meaningless. Any physically meaningful equation and any inequality will have the same dimensions on its left and right sides, a property known as dimensional homogeneity. Checking for dimensional homogeneity is a common application of dimensional analysis, serving as a plausibility check on derived equations and computations. It also serves as a guide and constraint in deriving equations that may describe a physical system in the absence of a more rigorous derivation. <laughs> Concrete numbers and base units A lot of parameters and the measurements m in the physical sciences and engineering are expressed as a concrete number, a numerical quantity q and a corresponding dimensional unit. Often a quantity is expressed in terms of several other quantities, for example, speed is a combination of length and time, e.g. 60 miles per hour or 1.4 km per second. Compound relations with per are expressed with division, e.g. 60 miles, 1 h. Other relations can involve multiplication often shown with a centered dot or juxtaposition, powers like m2 for square meters, or combinations thereof. A set of base units for a system of measurement is a conventionally chosen set of units, none of which can be expressed as a combination of the others, and in terms of which all the remaining units of the system can be expressed. For example, units for length and time are normally chosen as base units. Units for volume, however, can be factored into the base units of length m3, thus they are considered derived or compound units. Sometimes the names of units obscure the fact that they are derived units. For example, a newton n is a unit of force, which will have units of mass kilogram times acceleration ms minus 2. The newton is defined as 1 n. Equals 1 kilogram ms minus 2. Equals Topic. Percentages and derivatives Topic. Percentages are dimensionless quantities, since they are ratios of two quantities with the same dimensions. In other words, the percent sign can be read as hundredths, since 1%. 1 percent. 1 100. Taking a derivative with respect to a quantity adds the dimension of the variable one is differentiating with respect to, in the denominator. Thus, position x has the dimension l length. Derivative of position with respect to time dx, dt, velocity has dimension l t minus 1 length from position, time due to the derivative. The second derivative d2x dt2 equals dx dt dt acceleration has dimension lt minus 2 in economics one distinguishes between stocks and flows a stock has units of units say widgets or dollars while a flow is a derivative of a stock and has units of units time say dollars per year in some contexts dimensional quantities are expressed as dimensionless quantities or percentages by omitting some dimensions 
For example, debt to GDP ratios are generally expressed as percentages, total debt outstanding dimension of currency divided by annual GDP dimension of currency, but one may argue that in comparing a stock to a flow, annual GDP should have dimensions of currency time, dollars per year, for instance, and thus debt to GDP should have units of years, which indicates that debt to GDP is the number of years needed for a constant GDP to pay the debt if all GDP is spent on the debt and the debt is otherwise unchanged. Conversion factor In dimensional analysis, a ratio which converts one unit of measure into another without changing the quantity is called a conversion factor. For example, kPa and bar are both units of pressure, and 100 kPa. Topic. 1 bar. The rules of algebra allow both sides of an equation to be divided by the same expression, so this is equivalent to 100 kPa, 1 bar. 1. Since any quantity can be multiplied by 1 without changing it, the expression, 100 kPa, 1 bar can be used to convert from bars to kPa by multiplying it with the quantity to be converted, including units. For example, 5 bars times 100 kPa, 1 bar. Topic: 500 kPa because 5 times 100 over 1. 500 and bar per bar cancels out, so 5 bars equals 500 kPa. Equals Topic: Dimensional homogeneity. Equals: The most basic rule of dimensional analysis is that of dimensional homogeneity. Only commensurable quantities, physical quantities having the same dimension, may be compared, equated, added, or subtracted. However, the dimensions form an abelian group under multiplication, so. One may take ratios of incommensurable quantities quantities with different dimensions, and multiply or divide them, for example, it makes no sense to ask whether one hour is more, the same, or less than one kilometer, as these have different dimensions, nor to add one hour to one kilometer. However, it makes perfect sense to ask whether one mile is more, the same, or less than one kilometer being the same dimension of physical quantity even though the units are different. On the other hand, if an object travels 100 km in 2 hours, one may divide these and conclude that the object's average speed was 50 km per hour. The rule implies that in a physically meaningful expression only quantities of the same dimension can be added, subtracted, or compared. For example, if MMAN, MRAT and LMAN denote, respectively, the mass of some man, the mass of a rat and the length of that man, the dimensionally homogeneous expression MMAN plus MRAT is meaningful, but the heterogeneous expression MMAN plus LMAN is meaningless. However, MMAN, L2 man is fine. Thus, dimensional analysis may be used as a sanity check of physical equations. The two sides of any equation must be commensurable or have the same dimensions. Even when two physical quantities have identical dimensions, it may nevertheless be meaningless to compare or add them. For example, although torque and energy share the dimension L2 mt2, they are fundamentally different physical quantities. To compare, add, or subtract quantities with the same dimensions but expressed in different units, the standard procedure is first to convert them all to the same units. For example, to compare 32 meters with 35 yards, use 1 yard equals 0.9144 meters to convert 35 yards to 32.004 meters. A related principle is that any physical law that accurately describes the real world must be independent of the units used to measure the physical variables. For example, Newton's laws of motion must hold true whether distance is measured in miles or kilometers. This principle gives rise to the form that conversion factors must take between units that measure the same dimension, multiplication by a simple constant. It also ensures equivalence, for example, if two buildings are the same height in feet, then they must be the same height in meters. The factor label method for converting units 
The factor label method is the sequential application of conversion factors expressed as fractions and arranged so that any dimensional unit appearing in both the numerator and denominator of any of the fractions can be cancelled out until only the desired set of dimensional units is obtained. For example, 10 miles per hour can be converted to meters per second by using a sequence of conversion factors as shown below. 10 mile 1 hour times 1609.344 meter 1 mile times 1 hour 3600 second equals 4.4704 meter second Display style FRAC ten cancel text mile one cancel text hour times FRAC one thousand six hundred nine point three four four text meter one cancel text mile times FRAC one cancel text hour three thousand six hundred text second equals four point four seven zero four FRAC text meter text second It can be seen that each conversion factor is equivalent to the value of one. For example, starting with one mile. Topic: 1,609.344 meters, and dividing both sides of the equation by one mile yields one mile, one mile. 1609.344 meters, one mile, which when simplified yields 1 equals 1609.344 meters, one mile. So, when the units mile and hour are cancelled out and the arithmetic is done, 10 miles per hour converts to 4.4704 meters per second. As a more complex example, the concentration of nitrogen oxides, i.e., no x. Display style color blue C E no underscore X in the flue gas from an industrial furnace can be converted to a mass flow rate expressed in grams per hour, i.e. gram per hour of no X display style C E no underscore X by using the following information as shown below Knox concentration. Topic: 10 parts per million by volume. 10 ppm v equals 10 volumes, 106 volumes. Knox molar mass. Topic: 46 kilograms per kilo mole. 46 grams per mole. Flow rate of flue gas. Topic: 20 cubic meters per minute. 20 cubic meters per minute. The flue gas exits the furnace at 0 degrees Celsius temperature and 101.325 kilopascals absolute pressure. The molar volume of a gas at 0 degrees Celsius temperature and 101.325 kilopascals is 22.414 cubic meters per kilo mole. 10 m 3 no x 10 6 m 3 gas times 20 m 3 gas 1 minute times 60 minute 1 hour times 1 kmol no x 22.414 m 3 no x times 46 kilogram no x 1 kmol no x times 1000 g no x 1 kilogram no x equals 24 63 
G no X hour display style frac 10 cancel C E M carrot 3 C E no underscore X 10 carrot 6 cancel C E M carrot 3 C E gas times frac 20 cancel C E M carrot 3 C E gas 1 cancel C E minute times frac 60 cancel C E minute 1 C E hour times frac 1 cancel C E K M O L no underscore X 22 Point four one four cancel C E M carrot three C E no underscore X times F R A C forty six cancel C E kilogram no underscore X one cancel C E K M O L no underscore X times F R A C one thousand C E G no underscore X one cancel C E kilogram no underscore X equals twenty four point six three F R A C C E G no underscore X C E hour after cancelling out any dimensional units that appear both in the numerators and denominators of the fractions in the above equation, the Knox concentration of 10 ppmv converts to mass flow rate of 24.63 g per hour. Checking equations that involve dimensions The factor label method can also be used on any mathematical equation to check whether or not the dimensional units on the left-hand side of the equation are the same as the dimensional units on the right-hand side of the equation. Having the same units on both sides of an equation does not ensure that the equation is correct, but having different units on the two sides when expressed in terms of base units of an equation implies that the equation is wrong. For example, check the universal gas law equation of PV equals nRT when the pressure P is in pascals pa. The volume 5 is in cubic meters m3. The amount of substance N is in moles mole. The universal gas law constant R is 8.3145 pascals m3, mole K. The temperature T is in kelvins K. Pa m3 equals mole 1 times Pa m three mole k times k one display style c e pa m cubed equals frac cancel c e mole one times frac c e pa m cubed cancel c e mole cancel c e k times frac cancel c e k one as can be seen, when the dimensional units appearing in the numerator and denominator of the equation's right-hand side are cancelled out, both sides of the equation have the same dimensional units. Dimensional analysis can be used as a tool to construct equations that relate non-associated physico-chemical properties. The equations may reveal hitherto unknown or overlooked properties of matter, in the form of left-over dimensions, dimensional adjusters, that can then be assigned physical significance. It is important to point out that such mathematical manipulation is neither without prior precedent, nor without considerable scientific significance. Indeed, the Planck's constant, a fundamental constant of the universe, was discovered as a purely mathematical abstraction or representation that built on the Rayleigh genes equation for preventing the ultraviolet catastrophe. It was assigned and ascended to its quantum physical significance either in tandem or post-mathematical dimensional adjustment, not earlier. Topic. Limitations The factor label method can convert only unit quantities for which the units are in a linear relationship intersecting at zero. Most units fit this paradigm. An example for which it cannot be used is the conversion between degrees Celsius and Kelvins or degrees Fahrenheit. Between degrees Celsius and Kelvins, there is a constant difference rather than a constant ratio, while between degrees Celsius and degrees Fahrenheit there is neither a constant difference nor a constant ratio. There is, however, an affine transform x a x plus b display style x mapsto x plus b rather than a linear transform x a x display style x between them 
For example, the freezing point of water is 0 degrees Celsius and 32 degrees Fahrenheit, and a 5 degrees Celsius change is the same as a 9 degrees Fahrenheit change. Thus, to convert from units of Fahrenheit to units of Celsius, one subtracts 32 degrees Fahrenheit the offset from the point of reference, divides by 9 degrees Fahrenheit and multiplies by 5 degrees Celsius scales by the ratio of units, and adds 0 degrees Celsius the offset from the point of reference. Reversing this yields the formula for obtaining a quantity in units of Celsius from units of Fahrenheit. One could have started with the equivalence between 100 degrees Celsius and 212 degrees Fahrenheit, though this would yield the same formula at the end. Hence, to convert the numerical quantity value of a temperature T F in degrees Fahrenheit to a numerical quantity value T C in degrees Celsius, this formula may be used. T C equals T F minus 32 times 5 ninths. To convert T C in degrees Celsius to T F in degrees Fahrenheit, this formula may be used. T F equals T C times 9 fifths plus 32 equals. Topic applications equals. Dimensional analysis is most often used in physics and chemistry, and in the mathematics thereof, but finds some applications outside of those fields as well. Mathematics A simple application of dimensional analysis to mathematics is in computing the form of the volume of an n ball, the solid ball in n dimensions, or the area of its surface, the n sphere, being an n dimensional figure. The volume scales as x n display style x caret n, while the surface area, being n minus one display style n one dimensional scales as x n minus 1 display style x caret n 1 thus the volume of the n ball in terms of the radius as c n r n display style c underscore n r caret n for some constant c n Display style c underscore n. Determining the constant takes more involved mathematics, but the form can be deduced and checked by dimensional analysis alone. Topic: Finance, Economics, and Accounting. In finance, economics, and accounting, dimensional analysis is most commonly referred to in terms of the distinction between stocks and flows. More generally, dimensional analysis is used in interpreting various financial ratios, economics ratios, and accounting ratios. For example, the P.E. ratio has dimensions of time units of years, and can be interpreted as years of earnings to earn the price paid. In economics, debt-to-GDP ratio also has units of years debt has units of currency, GDP has units of currency per year. More surprisingly, bond duration also has units of years, which can be shown by dimensional analysis, but takes some financial intuition to understand. Velocity of money has units of 1, years GDP, money supply has units of currency per year over currency, how often a unit of currency circulates per year. Interest rates are often expressed as a percentage, but more properly percent per annum, which has dimensions of 1, years. Topic. Fluid mechanics In fluid mechanics, dimensional analysis is performed in order to obtain dimensionless pi terms or groups. According to the principles of dimensional analysis, any prototype can be described by a series of these terms or groups that describe the behavior of the system. Using suitable pi terms or groups, it is possible to develop a similar set of pi terms for a model that has the same dimensional relationships. In other words, pi terms provide a shortcut to developing a model representing a certain prototype. Common dimensionless groups in fluid mechanics include Reynolds number, re, generally important in all types of fluid problems. R E 
equals rho v d mu display style mathrm re equals frac rho v d mu frode number fr modeling flow with a free surface f r equals v g l display style mathrm fr equals frac v sqrt g l euler number eu used in problems in which pressure is of interest e u equals delta p rho v 2 display style mathrm eu equals frac delta p rho v caret 2 Mach number m important high speed flows where the velocity approaches or exceeds the local speed of sound m equals v c display style mathrm m equals frac v c where c is the local speed of sound topic history The origins of dimensional analysis have been disputed by historians. The 19th century French mathematician Joseph Fourier is generally credited with having made important contributions based on the idea that physical laws like F. Topic: <laughs> Ma should be independent of the units employed to measure the physical variables. This led to the conclusion that meaningful laws must be homogeneous equations in their various units of measurement, a result which was eventually formalized in the Buckingham Pi theorem. However, the first application of dimensional analysis has been credited to the Italian scholar François Deviat de Fontenex it was published in 1761, 61 years before the publication of Fourier's work. James Clerk Maxwell played a major role in establishing modern use of dimensional analysis by distinguishing mass, length, and time as fundamental units, while referring to other units as derived. Although Maxwell defined length, time, and mass to be the three fundamental units. He also noted that gravitational mass can be derived from length and time by assuming a form of Newton's law of universal gravitation in which the gravitational constant g is taken as unity, thereby defining m l 3 t 2 By assuming a form of Coulomb's law in which Coulomb's constant k is taken as unity, Maxwell then determined that the dimensions of an electrostatic unit of charge were q. Topic L three halves m one two t minus one, which after substituting his m L three t minus two equation for mass results in charge having the same dimensions as mass, viz. Q equals L three t minus two. Dimensional analysis is also used to derive relationships between the physical quantities that are involved in a particular phenomenon that one wishes to understand and characterize. It was used for the first time PASIC 2005 in this way in 1872 by Lord Rayleigh, who was trying to understand why the sky is blue. Rayleigh first published the technique in his 1877 book The Theory of Sound. The original meaning of the word dimension, in Fourier's Theory de la Chaleur, was the numerical value of the exponents of the base units. For example, acceleration was considered to have the dimension 1 with respect to the unit of length, and the dimension minus 2 with respect to the unit of time. This was slightly changed by Maxwell, who said the dimensions of acceleration are lt minus 2, instead of just the exponents. Topic: Mathematical examples. The Buckingham Pi theorem describes how every physically meaningful equation involving n variables can be equivalently rewritten as an equation of n minus m dimensionless parameters, where m is the rank of the dimensional matrix. Furthermore, and most importantly, it provides a method for computing these dimensionless parameters from the given variables. 
A dimensional equation can have the dimensions reduced or eliminated through nondimensionalization, which begins with dimensional analysis, and involves scaling quantities by characteristic units of a system or natural units of nature. This gives insight into the fundamental properties of the system, as illustrated in the examples below. Definition The dimension of a physical quantity can be expressed as a product of the basic physical dimensions such as length, mass and time, each raised to a rational power. The dimension of a physical quantity is more fundamental than some scale unit used to express the amount of that physical quantity. For example, mass is a dimension, while the kilogram is a particular scale unit chosen to express a quantity of mass. Except for natural units, the choice of scale is cultural and arbitrary. There are many possible choices of basic physical dimensions. The SI standard recommends the usage of the following dimensions and corresponding symbols, length L, mass M, time T, electric current I, absolute temperature theta, amount of substance N, and luminous intensity J. The symbols are by convention usually written in Roman sans serif typeface. Mathematically, the dimension of the quantity Q is given by dim Q equals L A M B T C I D theta E N F J G Display style text dim tilde q equals m a t h s f l caret a m a t h s f m caret b m a t h s f t caret c m a t h s f i caret d m a t h s f theta caret e m a t h s f n caret f m a t h s f j caret g where a b c d e f g are the dimensional exponents. Other physical quantities could be defined as the base quantities, as long as they form a linearly independent basis. For instance, one could replace the dimension of electrical current I of the SI basis with a dimension of electric charge Q, since Q equals it. As examples, the dimension of the physical quantity speed V is dim V equals length time equals L T equals L T minus one display style text dim tilde v equals frac text length text time equals frac m a t h s f l m a t h s f t equals m a t h s f l t caret minus one and the dimension of the physical quantity force F is dim F equals mass times acceleration equals mass times length time 2 equals m l t 2 equals m l t minus 2 Display style text dim tilde f equals text mass times text acceleration equals text mass times frac text length text time caret two equals frac m a t h s f m l m a t h s f t caret two equals m a t h s f m l t caret minus two. The unit chosen to express a physical quantity and its dimension are related, but not identical concepts. The units of a physical quantity are defined by convention and related to some standard, e.g. Length may have units of meters, feet, inches, miles or micrometers, but any length always has a dimension of L, no matter what units of length are chosen to express it. Two different units of the same physical quantity have conversion factors that relate them. For example, 1 in equals 2.54 cm, in this case 2.54 cm, in, is the conversion factor, which is itself dimensionless. Therefore, multiplying by that conversion factor does not change the dimensions of a physical quantity. There are also physicists that have cast doubt on the very existence of incompatible fundamental dimensions of physical quantity, although this does not invalidate the usefulness of dimensional analysis.
Topic: Mathematical properties. The dimensions that can be formed from a given collection of basic physical dimensions, such as m, l, and t, form an abelian group. The identity is written as 1, l0. Topic: 1 and the inverse to l is 1 per liter or l minus 1. L raised to any rational power p is a member of the group, having an inverse of L minus p or 1, L p. The operation of the group is multiplication, having the usual rules for handling exponents ln times L m ln plus m. This group can be described as a vector space over the rational numbers, with for example dimensional symbol mil jtk corresponding to the vector i, j, k. When physical measured quantities be they like dimensioned or unlike dimensioned are multiplied or divided by one other, their dimensional units are likewise multiplied or divided, this corresponds to addition or subtraction in the vector space. When measurable quantities are raised to a rational power, the same is done to the dimensional symbols attached to those quantities, this corresponds to scalar multiplication in the vector space. A basis for such a vector space of dimensional symbols is called a set of base quantities, and all other vectors are called derived units. As in any vector space, one may choose different bases, which yields different systems of units e.g., choosing whether the unit for charge is derived from the unit for current, or vice versa. The group identity 1, the dimension of dimensionless quantities, corresponds to the origin in this vector space. The set of units of the physical quantities involved in a problem correspond to a set of vectors or a matrix. The nullity describes some number e m, of ways in which these vectors can be combined to produce a zero vector. These correspond to producing from the measurements a number of dimensionless quantities, π1, Pi m, in fact these ways completely span the null subspace of another different space, of powers of the measurements, every possible way of multiplying and exponentiating together the measured quantities to produce something with the same units as some derived quantity x can be expressed in the general form x equals i equals 1 m pi i k i Display style x equals prod underscore i equals one caret m pi underscore i caret k underscore i. Consequently, every possible commensurate equation for the physics of the system can be rewritten in the form f pi one pi two pi m equals zero. Display style f pi underscore one pi underscore two Pi underscore m equals zero. Knowing this restriction can be a powerful tool for obtaining new insight into the system. Topic: Mechanics. The dimension of physical quantities of interest in mechanics can be expressed in terms of base dimensions m, l, and t. These form a three-dimensional vector space. This is not the only valid choice of base dimensions, but it is the one most commonly used. For example, one might choose force, length and mass as the base dimensions as some have done, with associated dimensions f, l, m, this corresponds to a different basis, and one may convert between these representations by a change of basis. The choice of the base set of dimensions is thus a convention, with the benefit of increased utility and familiarity. The choice of base dimensions is not arbitrary, because the dimensions must form a basis, they must span the space, and be linearly independent. For example, f, l, m form a set of fundamental dimensions because they form a basis that is equivalent to m, l, t. The former can be expressed as f. f m, l, t, 2, l, m, while the latter can be expressed as m, l, t. M L F one half. On the other hand, length, velocity, and time L V T do not form a set of as base dimensions for two reasons. There is no way to obtain mass or anything derived from it, such as force, without introducing another base dimension. Thus, they do not span the space. Velocity, being expressible in terms of length and time V, 
equals L T is redundant. The set is not linearly independent. Equals. Topic: Other fields of physics and chemistry. Equals. Depending on the field of physics, it may be advantageous to choose one or another extended set of dimensional symbols. In electromagnetism, for example, it may be useful to use dimensions of m, l, t, and q, where q represents the dimension of electric charge. In thermodynamics, the base set of dimensions is often extended to include a dimension for temperature, theta. In chemistry, the amount of substance, the number of molecules divided by the Avogadro constant, approximately equals 6.02 times 1,023 moles minus 1, is defined as a base dimension n as well. In the interaction of relativistic plasma with strong laser pulses, a dimensionless relativistic similarity parameter, connected with the symmetry properties of the collisionless Vlasov equation, is constructed from the plasma, electron and critical densities in addition to the electromagnetic vector potential. The choice of the dimensions or even the number of dimensions to be used in different fields of physics is to some extent arbitrary, but consistency in use and ease of communications are common and necessary features. Topic. Polynomials and transcendental functions Scalar arguments to transcendental functions such as exponential, trigonometric and logarithmic functions, or to inhomogeneous polynomials, must be dimensionless quantities. Note, this requirement is somewhat relaxed in Ciano's orientational analysis described below, in which the square of certain dimension quantities are dimensionless. While most mathematical identities about dimensionless numbers translate in a straightforward manner to dimensional quantities, care must be taken with logarithms of ratios, the identity log a, b equals log a minus log b, where the logarithm is taken in any base, holds for dimensionless numbers a and b, but it does not hold if a and b are dimensional, because in this case the left-hand side is well defined but the right-hand side is not. Similarly, while one can evaluate monomials xn of dimensional quantities, one cannot evaluate polynomials of mixed degree with dimensionless coefficients on dimensional quantities. For x2, the expression 3 meters 2. Topic: 9 square meters makes sense as an area, while for x2 plus x, the expression 3 meters 2 plus 3 meters. 9 square meters plus 3 meters does not make sense. However, polynomials of mixed degree can make sense if the coefficients are suitably chosen physical quantities that are not dimensionless. For example, 1 2 minus 32 foot second 2 t 2 plus 500 Second T Display style FRAC one two C D O T left minus thirty two FRAC text foot text second carrot two right C D O T T carrot two plus left five hundred FRAC text foot text second right C D O T T This is the height to which an object rises in time T if the acceleration of gravity is thirty two feet per second per second and the initial upward speed is five hundred feet per second. It is not even necessary for t to be in seconds. For example, suppose t equals 0.01 minutes. Then the first term would be 1 2 minus 32 foot second 2 0 0.01 minute 2 equals 1 2 minus 32 0 0 1 2 minute second 2 foot equals 1 2 minus 32 0 0.012 62 foot 
Display style begin aligned and FRAC one two C D O T left minus thirty two FRAC text foot text second carrot two right C D O T zero point zero one text minute carrot two ten PT equals and FRAC one two C D O T minus thirty two C D O T left zero point zero one carrot two right left FRAC text minute text second right carrot two C D O T text foot 10 pt equals and frac 1 2 cdot minus 32 cdot left 0.01 carat 2 right cdot 60 carat 2 cdot text foot end aligned topic incorporating units The value of a dimensional physical quantity z is written as the product of a unit z within the dimension and a dimensionless numerical factor n. z equals n times z equals n z. Display style z equals n times z equals n z. When like dimensioned quantities are added or subtracted or compared, it is convenient to express them in consistent units so that the numerical values of these quantities may be directly added or subtracted. But, in concept, there is no problem adding quantities of the same dimension expressed in different units. For example, one meter added to one foot is a length, but one cannot derive that length by simply adding one and one. A conversion factor, which is a ratio of like dimensioned quantities and is equal to the dimensionless unity, is needed. One feet equals 0 0.3048 m. Display style one m box feet equals 0 0.3048 m box m is identical to one equals 0 0.3048 m 1 feet display style 1 equals frac 0.3048 m box m 1 m box feet the factor 0.3048 m feet display style 0.3048 frac m box m m box feet is identical to the dimensionless one, so multiplying by this conversion factor changes nothing. Then when adding two quantities of like dimension, but expressed in different units, the appropriate conversion factor, which is essentially the dimensionless one, is used to convert the quantities to identical units so that their numerical values can be added or subtracted. Only in this manner is it meaningful to speak of adding like dimension quantities of differing units. Topic. Position versus displacement Some discussions of dimensional analysis implicitly describe all quantities as mathematical vectors. In mathematics, scalars are considered a special case of vectors. Vectors can be added to or subtracted from other vectors, and, inter alia, multiplied or divided by scalars. If a vector is used to define a position, this assumes an implicit point of reference, an origin. While this is useful and often perfectly adequate, allowing many important errors to be caught, it can fail to model certain aspects of physics. A more rigorous approach requires distinguishing between position and displacement or moment in time versus duration, or absolute temperature versus temperature change. Consider points on a line, each with a position with respect to a given origin, and distances among them. Positions and displacements all have units of length, but their meaning is not interchangeable. Adding two displacements should yield a new displacement walking 10 paces then 20 paces gets you 30 paces forward. Adding a displacement to a position should yield a new position walking one block down the street from an intersection gets you to the next intersection. Subtracting two positions should yield a displacement. But one may not add two positions, this illustrates the subtle distinction between affine quantities ones modeled by an affine space, such as position and vector quantities ones modeled by a vector space, such as displacement. Vector quantities may be added to each other, yielding a new vector quantity, and a vector quantity may be added to a suitable affine quantity a vector space acts on an affine space, yielding a new affine quantity. 
A fine quantities cannot be added, but may be subtracted, yielding relative quantities which are vectors, and these relative differences may then be added to each other or to an affine quantity. Properly then, positions have dimension of affine length, while displacements have dimension of vector length. To assign a number to an affine unit, one must not only choose a unit of measurement, but also a point of reference, while to assign a number to a vector unit only requires a unit of measurement. Thus some physical quantities are better modeled by vectorial quantities while others tend to require a fine representation, and the distinction is reflected in their dimensional analysis. This distinction is particularly important in the case of temperature, for which the numeric value of absolute zero is not the origin zero in some scales. For absolute zero, zero k Minus 273.15 degrees Celsius Minus 459. 67 degrees Fahrenheit equals 0 degrees R, but for temperature differences 1 K Topic: 1 degree Celsius does not equal 1 degree Fahrenheit 1 degree R, here degree R refers to the Rankine scale, not the Rayomer scale. Unit conversion for temperature differences is simply a matter of multiplying by, e.g., 1 degree Fahrenheit, 1 K, although the ratio is not a constant value. But because some of these scales have origins that do not correspond to absolute zero, conversion from one temperature scale to another requires accounting for that. As a result, simple dimensional analysis can lead to errors if it is ambiguous whether 1K means the absolute temperature equal to minus 272.15 degrees Celsius, or the temperature difference equal to 1 degree Celsius. Orientation and frame of reference Similar to the issue of a point of reference is the issue of orientation. A displacement in two or three dimensions is not just a length, but is a length together with a direction. This issue does not arise in one dimension, or rather is equivalent to the distinction between positive and negative. Thus, to compare or combine two dimensional quantities in a multi dimensional space, one also needs an orientation, they need to be compared to a frame of reference. This leads to the extensions discussed below, namely Huntley's directed dimensions and Ciano's orientational analysis. Examples A simple example, period of a harmonic oscillator What is the period of oscillation T of a mass m attached to an ideal linear spring with spring constant k suspended in gravity of strength g? That period is the solution for T of some dimensionless equation in the variables T, m, k, and g. The four quantities have the following dimensions, T, T, m, m, k, m, T2, and g, l, T2. From these we can form only one dimensionless product of powers of our chosen variables. G one display style g underscore one equals t two k m display style t caret two k per meter t two m t two m equals one and putting g one equals c display style g underscore one equals c for some dimensionless constant c gives the dimensionless equation sot. The dimensionless product of powers of variables is sometimes referred to as a dimensionless group of variables, here the term group means collection, rather than mathematical group. They are often called dimensionless numbers as well. Note that the variable g does not occur in the group. It is easy to see that it is impossible to form a dimensionless product of powers that combines g with k, m, and t, because g is the only quantity that involves the dimension L. This implies that in this problem the g is irrelevant. Dimensional analysis can sometimes yield strong statements about the irrelevance of some quantities in a problem, or the need for additional parameters. 
If we have chosen enough variables to properly describe the problem, then from this argument we can conclude that the period of the mass on the spring is independent of g, it is the same on the Earth or the Moon. The equation demonstrating the existence of a product of powers for our problem can be written in an entirely equivalent way. T equals kappa m k display style t equals kappa sqrt tfrac m k for some dimensionless constant kappa equal to c display style sqrt c from the original dimensionless equation when faced with a case where dimensional analysis rejects a variable g, here, that one intuitively expects to belong in a physical description of the situation, another possibility is that the rejected variable is in fact relevant, but that some other relevant variable has been omitted, which might combine with the rejected variable to form a dimensionless quantity. That is, however, not the case here. When dimensional analysis yields only one dimensionless group, as here, there are no unknown functions, and the solution is said to be complete, although it still may involve unknown dimensionless constants, such as kappa. Topic a more complex example, energy of a vibrating wire Consider the case of a vibrating wire of length L vibrating with an amplitude A L. The wire has a linear density ρ M, L, and is under tension S M, L, T2, and we want to know the energy E M, L2, T2, in the wire. Let π1 and π2 be two dimensionless products of powers of the variables chosen, given by π1 equals eas π2 equals a. Display style begin aligned π underscore 1 and equals frac e as π underscore 2 and equals frac l a end aligned. The linear density of the wire is not involved. The two groups found can be combined into an equivalent form as an equation. F e a S a equals zero. Display style f left frac e as frac l a right equals zero, where f is some unknown function, or equivalently as e equals a s f a. Display style e equals a s f left frac l a right where f is some other unknown function. Here the unknown function implies that our solution is now incomplete, but dimensional analysis has given us something that may not have been obvious, the energy is proportional to the first power of the tension. Barring further analytical analysis, we might proceed to experiments to discover the form for the unknown function f. But our experiments are simpler than in the absence of dimensional analysis. We'd perform none to verify that the energy is proportional to the tension. Or perhaps we might guess that the energy is proportional to, and so infer that E equals S. The power of dimensional analysis as an aid to experiment and forming hypotheses becomes evident. The power of dimensional analysis really becomes apparent when it is applied to situations, unlike those given above, that are more complicated, the set of variables involved are not apparent, and the underlying equations hopelessly complex. Consider, for example, a small pebble sitting on the bed of a river. If the river flows fast enough, it will actually raise the pebble and cause it to flow along with the water. At what critical velocity will this occur? Sorting out the guessed variables is not so easy as before. But dimensional analysis can be a powerful aid in understanding problems like this, and is usually the very first tool to be applied to complex problems where the underlying equations and constraints are poorly understood. In such cases, the answer may depend on a dimensionless number such as the Reynolds number, which may be interpreted by dimensional analysis. A third example, demand versus capacity for a rotating disk Consider the case of a thin, solid, parallel-sided rotating disk of axial thickness T L and radius R L. The disk has a density ρ m, L3, rotates at an angular velocity ω and this leads to a stress S m, L1 t2 in the material. There is a theoretical linear elastic solution, given by Lame, to this problem when the disk is thin relative to its radius, the faces of the disk are free to move axially, and the plane stress-constitutive relations can be assumed to be valid. 
As the disc becomes thicker relative to the radius then the plane stress solution breaks down. If the disc is restrained axially on its free faces then a state of plane strain will occur. However, if this is not the case then the state of stress may only be determined though consideration of three-dimensional elasticity and there is no known theoretical solution for this case. An engineer might, therefore, be interested in establishing a relationship between the five variables. Dimensional analysis for this case leads to the following non-dimensional groups Demand – capacity equals rho r2 omega 2, s Thickness, radius or aspect ratio equals T, R Through the use of numerical experiments using, for example, the finite element method, the nature of the relationship between the two non-dimensional groups can be obtained as shown in the figure. As this problem only involves two non-dimensional groups, the complete picture is provided in a single plot and this can be used as a design, assessment chart for rotating disks. Extensions Topic <laughs> Huntley's extension directed dimensions Huntley Huntley 1967 has pointed out that it is sometimes productive to refine our concept of dimension Two possible refinements are The magnitude of the components of a vector are to be considered dimensionally distinct for example, rather than an indifferentiated length dimension L, we may have Lx represent dimension in the x direction, and so forth. This requirement stems ultimately from the requirement that each component of a physically meaningful equation scalar, vector, or tensor must be dimensionally consistent. Mass as a measure of quantity is to be considered dimensionally distinct from mass as a measure of inertia. As an example of the usefulness of the first refinement, suppose we wish to calculate the distance a cannonball travels when fired with a vertical velocity component v y display style v underscore mathrm y and a horizontal velocity component v x display style v underscore mathrm x Assuming it is fired on a flat surface. Assuming no use of directed lengths, the quantities of interest are then V X Display style V underscore Mathem X V Y Display style V underscore Mathem Y Both dimensioned as L T minus one, R, the distance traveled, having dimension L, and G the downward acceleration of gravity, with dimension L T minus two. With these four quantities, we may conclude that the equation for the range R may be written R V X A V Y B G C Display style R propto V underscore text X carrot A V underscore text Y carrot B G carrot C or dimensionally L equals L T A plus B L T two C displaystyle MATHSF L equals left FRAC MATHSF L MATHSF T right carrot A plus B left FRAC MATHSF L MATHSF T carrot two right carrot C from which we may deduce that a plus b plus c equals 1 display style a plus b plus c equals 1 and a plus b plus 2 c equals 0 Display style a plus b plus two c equals zero, which leaves one exponent undetermined. This is to be expected since we have two fundamental dimensions l and t, and four parameters with one equation. If, however, we use directed length dimensions, then v x display style v underscore mathrm x will be dimensioned as l x t minus one v y. Display style v underscore mathrm y 
as Lyt-1, R as Lx and G as Lyt-2. The dimensional equation becomes L x equals L x T A L Y T B L Y T two C Display style M A T H S F L underscore Mathem X equals left F R A C M A T H S F L underscore Mathem X M A T H S F T right carrot a left F R A C M A T H S F L underscore Mathem Y M A T H S F T right carrot B left F R A C M A T H S F L underscore Mathem Y M A T H S F T carrot two right carrot C and we may solve completely as a equals one display style a equals one b equals one display style b equals one and c equals minus one display style c equals minus one the increase in deductive power gained by the use of directed length dimensions is apparent. In a similar manner, it is sometimes found useful e.g., in fluid mechanics and thermodynamics to distinguish between mass as a measure of inertia inertial mass, and mass as a measure of quantity substantial mass. For example, consider the derivation of Poisson's law. We wish to find the rate of mass flow of a viscous fluid through a circular pipe. Without drawing distinctions between inertial and substantial mass, we may choose as the relevant variables m display style dot m the mass flow rate with dimension m t minus one p x display style p underscore text x the pressure gradient along the pipe with dimension m l minus two t minus two rho the density with dimension m l minus three a to the dynamic fluid viscosity with dimension ml minus 1 t minus 1 r the radius of the pipe with dimension l there are three fundamental variables so the above five equations will yield two dimensionless variables which we may take to be pi 1 equals m eta r display style pi underscore 1 equals dot m eta r and pi 2 equals p x rho r 5 m 2 display style pi underscore 2 equals p underscore mathrm x rho r caret 5 dot m caret 2 and we may express the dimensional equation as c equals pi 1 pi Two a equals m eta r p x rho r five m two a display style c equals pi underscore one pi underscore two caret o equals left frac dot m eta r right left frac p underscore mathrm x row r caret five dot m caret two right caret a where c and a are undetermined constants if we draw a distinction between inertial mass with dimension m i display style m underscore text i and substantial mass with dimension m s display style m underscore text s then mass flow rate and density will use substantial mass as the mass parameter while the pressure gradient and coefficient of viscosity will use inertial mass we now have four fundamental parameters and one dimensionless constant so that the dimensional equation may be written c equals p x Rho R four eta M display style C equals frac p underscore mathrm x rho R caret four eta dot M, where now only C is an undetermined constant found to be equal to pi 
8 display style pi 8 by methods outside of dimensional analysis this equation may be solved for the mass flow rate to yield Poisson's law topic Ciano's extension orientational analysis Huntley's extension has some serious drawbacks it does not deal well with vector equations involving the cross product nor does it handle well the use of angles as physical variables, it also is often quite difficult to assign the L, LX, Li, LZ, symbols to the physical variables involved in the problem of interest. He invokes a procedure that involves the symmetry of the physical problem. This is often very difficult to apply reliably, it is unclear as to what parts of the problem that the notion of symmetry is being invoked. Is it the symmetry of the physical body that forces are acting upon, or to the points, lines or areas at which forces are being applied? What if more than one body is involved with different symmetries? Consider the spherical bubble attached to a cylindrical tube, where one wants the flow rate of air as a function of the pressure difference in the two parts. What are the Huntley extended dimensions of the viscosity of the air contained in the connected parts? What are the extended dimensions of the pressure of the two parts? Are they the same or different? These difficulties are responsible for the limited application of Huntley's addition to real problems. Angles are, by convention, considered to be dimensionless variables, and so the use of angles as physical variables in dimensional analysis can give less meaningful results. As an example, consider the projectile problem mentioned above. Suppose that, instead of the x and y components of the initial velocity, we had chosen the magnitude of the velocity v and the angle theta at which the projectile was fired. The angle is, by convention, considered to be dimensionless, and the magnitude of a vector has no directional quality, so that no dimensionless variable can be composed of the four variables g, v, r, and theta. Conventional analysis will correctly give the powers of g and v, but will give no information concerning the dimensionless angle theta. Ciano -E has suggested that the directed dimensions of Huntley be replaced by using orientational symbols 1x1 y1z to denote vector directions, and an orientationless symbol 10. Thus, Huntley's Lx becomes L1x with L specifying the dimension of length, and 1x specifying the orientation. Ciano further shows that the orientational symbols have an algebra of their own. Along with the requirement that 1i minus 1 equals 1i, the following multiplication table for the orientation symbols results 1 0 1 x 1 y 1 z 1 0 1 0 1 x 1 y 1 z 1 x 1 x 101 z 1 y 1 y 1 y 1 z 1 o 1 extension 1 z 1 z 1 y 1 by 1 0 display style begin array c c c c c and math bf 1 underscore 0 and math BF one underscore text X and Math BF one underscore text Y and Math BF one underscore text Z line Math BF one underscore zero and one underscore zero and one underscore text X and one underscore text Y and one underscore text Z Math BF one underscore text X and one underscore text X and one underscore zero and one underscore text Z and one underscore text Y Math BF one underscore text Y and one underscore Underscore text y and one underscore text z and one underscore zero and one underscore text x math bf one underscore text z and one underscore text z and one underscore text y and one underscore text x and one underscore zero end array note that the orientational symbols form a group the Klein four group or Vier group. In this system, scalars always have the same orientation as the identity element, independent of the symmetry of the problem. Physical quantities that are vectors have the orientation expected, a force or a velocity in the z direction has the orientation of 1z. For angles, consider an angle θ that lies in the z-plane. Form a right triangle in the z-plane with θ being one of the acute angles. 
The side of the right triangle adjacent to the angle then has an orientation 1x and the side opposite has an orientation 1y. Then, since tan theta 1y, 1x theta plus we conclude that an angle in the xy plane must have an orientation 1y, 1x equals 1z, which is not unreasonable. Analogous reasoning forces the conclusion that sin theta has orientation 1z while cos theta has orientation 10. These are different, so one concludes correctly, for example, that there are no solutions of physical equations that are of the form a cos theta plus b sin theta, where a and b are real scalars. Note that an expression such as sin Theta plus pi two equals cos theta display style sin theta plus pi two equals cos theta is not dimensionally inconsistent since it is a special case of the sum of angles formula and should properly be written sin a one z plus b one Z equals sin a one Z cos b one Z plus sin b one Z cos a one Z display style Sin left a one underscore text z plus b one underscore text z right equals sin left a one underscore text z cos b one underscore text z right plus sin left b one underscore text z cos a one underscore text z right, which for a equals theta display style equals theta and B equals pi two display style B equals pi two yields sin theta one z plus pi two one z equals one z cos theta one Z display style sin theta one underscore text Z plus pi two one underscore text Z equals one underscore text Z cos theta one underscore text Z. Physical quantities may be expressed as complex numbers, e.g. E i theta display style e caret i theta which imply that the complex quantity i has an orientation equal to that of the angle it is associated with 1z in the above example. The assignment of orientational symbols to physical quantities and the requirement that physical equations be orientationally homogeneous can actually be used in a way that is similar to dimensional analysis to derive a little more information about acceptable solutions of physical problems. In this approach one sets up the dimensional equation and solves it as far as one can. If the lowest power of a physical variable is fractional, both sides of the solution is raised to a power such that all powers are integral. This puts it into normal form. The orientational equation is then solved to give a more restrictive condition on the unknown powers of the orientational symbols, arriving at a solution that is more complete than the one that dimensional analysis alone gives. Often the added information is that one of the powers of a certain variable is even or odd. As an example, for the projectile problem, using orientational symbols, theta, being in the xy plane will thus have dimension 1z and the range of the projectile r will be of the form r equals g a v b theta c, which means l 1 x l 1 Y T two A L T B one Z C 
display style r equals g caret a v caret b theta caret c text which means m a t h s f l one underscore mathrm x sim left frac m a t h s f l one underscore text y m a t h s f t caret two right caret a left frac m a t h s f l m a t h s f t right caret b one underscore m a t h s f z caret c Dimensional homogeneity will now correctly yield a topic minus one and b two. An orientational homogeneity requires that c be an odd integer. In fact, the required function of theta will be sin theta cos theta, which is a series of odd powers of theta. It is seen that the Taylor series of sin theta and cos theta are orientationally homogeneous using the above multiplication table, while expressions like cos theta plus sin theta and exp theta are not, and are correctly deemed unphysical. It should be clear that the multiplication rule used for the orientational symbols is not the same as that for the cross product of two vectors. The cross product of two identical vectors is zero, while the product of two identical orientational symbols is the identity element. Topic: <laughs> Dimensionless concepts. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Constants. The dimensionless constants that arise in the results obtained, such as the C in the Poiseuille's law problem and the kappa, display style kappa, in the spring problems discussed above, come from a more detailed analysis of the underlying physics and often arise from integrating some differential equation. Dimensional analysis itself has little to say about these constants, but it is useful to know that they very often have a magnitude of order unity. This observation can allow one to sometimes make back of the envelope calculations about the phenomenon of interest and therefore be able to more efficiently design experiments to measure it or to judge whether it is important etc topic <laughs> formalisms paradoxically dimensional analysis can be a useful tool even if all the parameters in the underlying theory are dimensionless e.g. lattice models such as the ising model can be used to study phase transitions and critical phenomena such models can be formulated in a purely dimensionless way as we approach the critical point closer and closer the distance over which the variables in the lattice model are correlated the so-called correlation length she display style she becomes larger and larger. Now, the correlation length is the relevant length scale related to critical phenomena, so one can, e.g., surmise on dimensional grounds that the non-analytical part of the free energy per lattice site should be 1 she d display style sim 1 she caret d where d display style d is the dimension of the lattice. It has been argued by some physicists, e.g., M. J. Duff, that the laws of physics are inherently dimensionless. The fact that we have assigned incompatible dimensions to length, time and mass is, according to this point of view, just a matter of convention, born out of the fact that before the advent of modern physics, there was no way to relate mass, length, and time to each other. The three independent dimensionful constants, c, h, and g, in the fundamental equations of physics must then be seen as mere conversion factors to convert mass, time and length into each other. Just as in the case of critical properties of lattice models, one can recover the results of dimensional analysis in the appropriate scaling limit, e.g., dimensional analysis in mechanics can be derived by reinserting the constants h, c, and g but we can now consider them to be dimensionless and demanding that a non-singular relation between quantities exists in the limit c infinity displaystyle c right arrow in a t zero Display style h b a r right arrow zero and g zero display style g right arrow zero. In problems involving a gravitational field, the latter limit should be taken such that the field stays finite. Topic: 
Dimensional equivalences Following are tables of commonly occurring expressions in physics, related to the dimensions of energy, momentum, and force. SI units Natural units If C Topic H one, where C is the speed of light and H is the reduced Planck constant, and a suitable fixed unit of energy is chosen, then all quantities of length L, mass m and time t can be expressed dimensionally as a power of energy E, because length, mass and time can be expressed using speed V, action S, and energy E m equals E V two L equals S V E T equals S E display style M equals frac E V caret two quad L equals frac S V E quad T equals frac S E though speed and action are dimensionless V Topic C one and S Topic H one so the only remaining quantity with dimension is energy. In terms of powers of dimensions E N equals M P L Q T R equals E P minus Q minus R display style M A T H S F E caret N equals M A T H S F M caret P M A T H S F L caret Q M A T H S F T caret R equals M A T H S F E caret P Q R this is particularly useful in particle physics and high energy physics, in which case the energy unit is the electron volt F. Dimensional checks and estimates become very simple in this system. However, if electric charges and currents are involved, another unit to be fixed is for electric charge, normally the electron charge E though other choices are possible. See also. Dimensionless numbers in fluid mechanics Fermi problem, used to teach dimensional analysis Rayleigh's method of dimensional analysis Similitude model and application of dimensional analysis System of measurement <laughs> Related areas of math Covariance and contravariance of vectors Exterior algebra Geometric algebra Quantity calculus Notes <laughs>